a bike, a bike, somebody pass a bike. So let me tell the world, this government, which this president heads, formed their squads. Hold on, formed their squads, one, this party, formed their squads that killed, that killed. Welcome back to the flight. Hit that subscription button, buddy, and stay updated with everything that's trending in Guyana and the diaspora. Thanks. Former British High Commissioner to Guyana, Greg Quinn, has raised questions and concern over President Irfan Ali's meeting with Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro on the border controversy last December in St. Vincent, expressing the view that the meeting sent a wrong message. On the Argyle meeting between Presidents Ali and Maduro, Quinn argues that that meeting was not in Guyana's interest. In fact, he said mere days after the signing of the Argyle Declaration, Venezuela continued with its intimidation tactics towards Guyana, which was an indication of the lack of respect for the agreement. Mr. Quinn said, History shows that appeasement doesn't work. Personally, I believe that sitting down and talking to Maduro about something which was clearly settled in 1899 suggests there is something to discuss. There isn't, period especially if a process is ongoing at the ICJ. Guyana should not take the border controversy lightly and must align itself with strategic partners that have Guyana's best interests at heart. Statement by IDP Lady AG. HGP Nightly News The Durban Declaration, the precursor to the United Nations Declaration of a Decade for the People of African Descent recognized that failure to combat and denounce racism, racial discrimination, xenophobia and related intolerance by all, especially public authorities and politicians at all levels, is a factor encouraging their perpetuation. This aptly describes the situation in Diana as exemplified, specifically, by the recent harassment of the Atwell family by the police in their attempt to silence Melissa Atwell, the fearless social media influencer. Vicious attacks on the character of commentator Paul Slow and the disrespectful denigration of the celebrated national artist and public official Ivor Tom by a sitting official to wit a minister of government. These occurrences are demonstrative of the traits of the rulers as much as they reflect what has become the national ethos, the sad state of our national institutions, and the weaponizing of the police and the politicians under the current rulership. The UN in its declaration of the decade for people of African descent resolved that states have a responsibility to undertake institutional and legal reforms as obligatory actions to ensure that citizens are accorded due recognition justice and equitable opportunities for development. In the spirit of the Declaration and that of universal human rights, IDPADAG calls on all civic-minded Guyanese to condemn these human rights violations, to join the struggle for recognition, justice and development for all Guyanese, and in particular these persons who have been targeted by the rulers' acts of intolerance and racial discrimination. Vice President Bayard Jagdio has issued a stern warning to the heads and accounting officers of public sector that government will be enforcing strict compliance with procurement rules and any departure from these regulations would not be tolerated. A release from the Department of Public Information stated, these remarks were made during a high-level meeting held at the Arthur Chung Conference Center on Tuesday where Jack Deal stressed that the government prioritizes transparency and accountability in the execution of public projects. His admonition comes amid growing concerns about corruption in the procurement sector. Residents will soon benefit from an enhanced water supply through the construction of a $130 million well at the new housing scheme in the Laban Intention East Coast Demerara. Works have already commenced to drill the well. When completed, it will deliver water to some 3,000 residents. This well will be drilled to a maximum depth of approximately 900 feet. During a visit to the site on Tuesday, Minister of Housing and Water Colin Kroll said the establishment of the well is critical in addressing the growing demand for treated water in the rapidly developing residential area. Currently, those residing in the area have no access to water. They purchase from outside sources. So in the interim, efforts are being made to connect the northern section of the housing scheme which consists of some 500 residents to the old well, which provides water to sections of the east coast of Demerara. This immediate intervention we are seeking to have will only benefit those coming in at the front, the few houses at the front. The major challenge will be for those within the young professional housing area, Kroll said. The project is expected to be completed within three months. Until then, Kroll urged persons to be patient. 
successful protests here lots of people tons of people um, to the point where the PP government complained to the police that we're making so much noise they tried to move us they couldn't move us then they said we can't use bull horns they go and bring so many cops I mean I mean I don't know a lot of cops so the president the installed president left early as you guys saw and um, so people are dispersing now um, all in love and a spirit of activism this is only the beginning we will make sure that we organize against them whenever they are in Brooklyn and Queens as a matter of fact we're gonna move into Queens as well so people are beginning to leave the protests I know a lot of people have to go to work but 
We send a strong message today. We sent a strong message. And the people in Guyana need to start doing the same thing. If everybody stand up, they can't shoot and kill everybody. So, um, let me publicly thank everybody that came out. We had about 200 people here. Um, thanks for coming out. Um, and we will do it again whenever they come to Brooklyn. We need results. We need to stop the racism. We need to stop attacks on Guyanese in the diaspora. So, thanks everybody. We'll continue to um, we will continue to broadcast until um, it's time to wrap up. Is your president? I know him sometimes. I know him sometimes. <laughs> She organized it? A natural way to stay ready, baby, because I'm ready for you, Mr. C. The ultimate male supplement, men's total wellness formula, packed with essential nutrients for men's health. She'll call you Mr. C. Um, he was put on bill. How much, how much money were you put on bill around it? Twenty thousand dollars bill. And what was the what was the um, what was the reason for you to be put on bill? What it court? He had to go to court for what? Playing music. Playing music in church. For playing keyboard, but honorably, can you please come? What did the officer say to you? I have to go to court because of playing music for, for church and giving God the praise and thanks. Yes, sir. And uh, that's why they, they, they said that they get charged and they have to go to court for that. All right. Because the, Amen. The, 18th, the 18th of November, they have to go to court. Park and it ended up on the road. They asked you what's showing you. Yes. It ended up on the road. Now I got a call from Mr. Williams. He was here Saturday measuring up my shed. Measuring up my shed and how far it come out and all these things. Threatening to break down my shed. Yeah, threatening to break down my shed. How I'm not supposed to. This is a residential area and I'm not supposed to operate in no business. I understand that. I'm fully much aware of that. Right? But this is a small business. This is not a multi-million dollar business. This is not a Chinese supermarket. Here, this is a small business. It's carry washing. Yeah, it's carry washing. We got to survive.